Massive brake lock out there to Carlos Rosto. That is rear wheel locks up. He's starting a charge. Oh boy, side by side that turn. Six continue their battle. Boy, oh boy, look at this. Side by side, wheel to wheel. This is really hair raising stuff. He doesn't take much of a slip. Let's see what happens out of swamp turn. And he's going to be in the tag layer. Who's having a look? Oh, 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 Going up the hill. Wow, big lock up there. Left front wheel. Now almost in the 50. And he's picked up the toe there. He's getting close. Watch his last pass. He does it now. Peter Burke getting a nice run down the back straightaway. He's going to get on the inside of Hunter Pool. Try to take that second spot away. And he does. Look at this. <laughs> look how wide they are, three and four wide. This is a very wide racetrack, and they're using every inch of it. But look at this, side by side, wheel to wheel. This is really hair raising stuff. He doesn't take much of a slip to get those wheels in blind. An absolutely masterly bit of driving. Turn up the volume, enjoy the start. There's the green flag. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, yikes. Look at the defenders to the outside. It's hard to make this work, but he's going to try. Watch Peter Burke in that Formula Enterprise The field car. has come set. Turn up the volume and get ready for the start. We've already got uh, the first part of our group six cars. In fact, this may be all of them. Yesterday we qualified all together, and then we had two separate races. So we'll see uh, if we do that same thing again today. And right at the very front of the field, you will see the Jonathan Finstrom. Uh, today it's a PX car or a prototype X. Yesterday it was a GTX. And uh, so they're just trying to find the right class. That car, uh, very potent, turning some uh, low 122 lap times yesterday. Uh, and I think they're just trying to find the right home uh, for it. It uh, was quick enough, a little, a little quick for the GT class. Even Ryan McManus couldn't keep up with that one. But uh, nonetheless, uh, he is out in this. And I'll give you a quick rundown. Jonathan Finstrom in the number two car. The 08 at Nico Vargas. The 33 at JT Novoselsky. 65 of Bill Niemeyer. The 8 of uh, Sean Gennari. Double zero, Andrew Gamble. The 9 of Peter Burke. The 117 of Kate Wilson. The 3 of Steve Myers. The 24 of Dave Howe. The 12 of Dr. Daniel Joseph Kaliba. The 31 of John Wilhelm, the 80 of Trevor Williams, the 03 of Craig Peluso, 41 of Glenn Gibbeton Jr., the 07 of Craig Campbell, the 30 of Rex Gunning, and the uh, 61 car of E.B. Lunkin. That will be uh, the cars that will make up this qualifying race for what we're going to call the uh, the Wings and Things. I'm not sure if that's the entire Wings and Things group or not. I'm looking at the false grid right now. I don't really see any cars on the false grid yet, but uh, they may be just getting ready to stage. Yeah, no cars on the false grid, so uh, that may be all of them here. I, we'll take a look. Uh, Rich, you'll get a good idea. Watch the uh, the way that Finstrom car works. It got faster every lap. Just again, or 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes, so let me know when you get away. As uh, obviously getting uh, used to the car and had to work his way through the field. This will be interesting though, uh, Nico Vardis is up there as well. Uh, Vardis uh, won yesterday quite handily, almost lapping the field in that Formula Atlantic uh, car. Here we go. All right, I'm on to the pavilion. Really a Formula 1000 kind of machine as they are coming now. Uh, green flag is out, sort of a late green. Vinstrom's car pulls away right now. Big V8 power out of that prototype as he dives it down into turn one. Watching the rest of these cars, uh, making sure everybody clears turn one. And it looks like they have as they will make their way up into the keyhole turn once again. We'll keep an eye on that Vinstrom uh, car. Yesterday, he was able to turn lap times around 122. We see a lot of uh, brake smoke out of a couple of cars there going into the keyhole. And today we are running uh, the pro course. Yesterday we ran the club course, so we'll get an idea of those lap times as they make their way down the straight. Once again, they're going to be coming at you fast, Rich. Yeah, they are. And Finstrom has uh, pulled out to a big lead. 
over second place Yardis, or excuse me, Yardis, followed by Niemeyer in that uh, P265 car. Um, that is, uh, yeah, that's Niemeyer. Looks like he may be under attack. Yeah, he's under attack from the 33 of JT Noveleski. So, uh, battle shaping up through uh, at the front, but I, I don't think anyone's going to catch Finstrom unless he breaks. Well, it's pretty close to him in the back section of the track, which we might expect. That uh, car of Vargas has uh, handles really well. It's really lightweight, where the prototype, uh, not quite as light, puts his foot down, though, and drives away here at the very uh, straightaway. But Vargas' car obviously handles a little bit better. He was able to close that all back up by the time they got to the carousel. So this could be uh, interesting. Finstrom on that first lap, a 130. But uh, obviously that'll get a little bit quicker. We would expect him to be around down around a 120. Uh, maybe in the low 120s. So uh, once he gets everything warmed up in that uh, prototype, probably it'll take it a couple of laps. Bart is uh, pretty quick right from the drop of, of the green. He will get a little bit faster too as those tires warm up. I'll have to get him with fresh tires later. Well, that is a good point for us to get the uh, you know, car has. You know, what we refer to as that straight line handling, whereas uh, uh, the Duke Barton car is uh, much more balanced overall through the uh, through the twistier sections, allowing him to close up. Uh, good battle uh, for fifth and sixth. That's uh, Gamble and, and uh, Geminari in the Formula Continentals. Um, and that is uh, for position for uh, first and second in the Formula Continental class. Excuse me, second and third in the Formula Continental class. And the lap times begin to fall a little bit here with uh, Finstrom now to 126.4. Vardis not far behind at a 127 flat. So those two uh, continue to pick up the pace just a little bit. Rest of the field gets a little bit uh, strung out. Bill Niemeyer in P2, currently sitting in the third spot. Had a pretty good day yesterday as he had that car working very well. So we'll keep an eye on the rest of these cars. Uh, E.B. Lincoln uh, got his Sports 2000 running. is a little uh, behind Glenn Gibbett Jr. as uh, we also see the uh, 30 car Rex Gunning, so the three Sports 2s are towards the tail end of this group. Uh, don't, they don't have quite the horsepower to match the cars in front, but uh, we'll keep an eye out. And uh, Novaleski has just passed Niemeyer for third overall. That Formula Continental got around him going into uh, the turn at the end of the straight and uh, is now putting a little bit of space over that uh, P2 car of uh, Bill Niemeyer. Picked up a couple more uh, tenths on that lap, a 123.9 for uh, Finstrom, a 125.4 now for Vargas as they continue uh, to uh, quicken their laps the cars come up to temperature, they'll uh, continue to get a little bit quicker here. Nice to see some of these uh, Sports 2000s out here today. Um, you know, we don't see them too much anymore uh, when you used to, uh, but uh, really neat cars and uh, uh, from what I understand, really fun to drive. So uh, great to see these out here with uh, B. Lunkin and uh, Glenn D Jividen Jr. and uh, Rex Gunning. Yeah, I remember we used to have full fields of those cars uh, as, uh, for at one time, and they've all sort of dropped by the wayside. While that's going on, the 31 of John will uh, help pulls in the pits and uh, is going to talk to the crew. So he pulls it in a little bit early, and uh, they're going to take a look at the car, pulling off the uh, bodywork, the rear cowling, to take a look at the engine. 
And here again, that car, Finstrom, uh, 124.0, a little slower, a couple tenths slower on that last lap. Pretty good battle uh, between uh, the number 24 car of the town and the number 12 car of Daniel Galifa. Excuse me if I mispronounce the name. Uh, Galifa's car is, uh, they're in two different two different classes. One of them is uh, uh, FX and the other one is uh, Formula Continental, but the uh, performance is about the same. And we just had a, uh, we just had Finstrom uh, lapping the tail end of the field uh, with the um, uh, next car. this uh, last lap for both uh, Vardis and Finstrom so not sure uh, what happened on that last lap but uh, they're certainly a little bit slower Coming up the hill out of Thunder Valley once again. As we will keep an eye on uh, this. Getting ready to put a lap now on Glenn Gibbett Jr. Comes by a little quicker this time uh, out of Finstrom a 123.3. But Vard is able to match that and be a little faster a 123.2. So those two drivers uh, beginning to turn the pace up just a little bit here as we are not quite half distance in this one. Bill Niemeyer comes by in the third spot, but uh, not really able to match in the fourth spot, I should say, for Bill Novoselsky in the third spot. Uh, but uh, those cars are about three, four seconds off the pace of our front two cars. Benstrom coming through the S's now, uh, followed by Vardis, and Vardis uh, seems to be maybe closing in a little bit. I haven't tracked the gap every lap, but visually seems to be a bit closer. And uh, then it's a ways back, like you said, Rusty, Rusty to the number 33 car of J.T. Nobleski and uh, uh, Bill Niemeyer Jr. Big gap after. Looks like about a half a minute back to uh, uh, Sean Janeri and Andrew Gamble. Those two are having a pretty good battle uh, in uh, Formula Continental. Those, uh, they're battling for second place in that class. Uh, they've been going between, you know, car lanes, or car lanes between each other through the whole race. So take, uh, be sure to watch them. Glenn Gibbeton Jr. pulls down into the pit lane. Uh, crew going out. Uh to have a chat, sort of throws his, shrugs his uh, shoulders a bit, not really sure what the issues uh, are, but uh, obviously not happy with the way something's working in that car, as uh, he's uh, probably going to pull it back into the uh, paddock, we'll see. 
again, like you mentioned earlier, Rich, uh, in these little short 20-minute qualifying races, once you make a call to the pits, there's really nothing to be gained uh, being back out on track. So he pulls it back to the paddock area, and the crew will head back there and see if they can make uh, some adjustments uh, for the rest of this. As cars continue to come by. So we have no blessing that uh, Meyer just came by here in um, turn five. Back to Sean Mary, who uh, uh, he was having a good battle with uh, Andrew Campbell, who just passed by. Those two were uh, close to each other, and uh, now they're quite a ways apart. Campbell sounds like he's uh, kind of taking it easy, so I don't know if he's having trouble with his car, maybe, or something. Uh, but uh, then we've got uh, the uh, 117 and number nine cars. Now they're different classes. But uh, one, the num number 117 of Kate Wilson, former Continental, number 9 of Peter Berg, former Enterprises, they uh, are battling back and forth, uh, turning uh, times close to each other. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure they want to race, but they also recognize they're not in the same class, so they uh, don't want to race too aggressively. The better car uh, making a call to the pits. Looked like he almost coasted in, uh, so uh, not sure what that issue was, and that's the double zero uh, car. Uh, but Andrew Gamble, it's one of those cars you talked about uh, in a really tight battle, Rich, and he's going to go back to the paddock. So again, some of these cars uh, making uh, about half distance here on the race, and then they decide to uh, pull in. Uh, our two leaders come by, uh, Finstrom and Vargas, still very close together, but they've got uh, had a lot of traffic around them uh, on that last lap, and still have even more traffic now as they make their way up into the uh, keyhole turn. So we'll have to see how that comes out. Uh, I'm still expecting some lap times a little quicker than what we've seen so far. So far, quick lap of the race is Finstrom at a 22.8, but uh, I would expect that to be a little bit quicker. The number 80 car comes in. Trevor Williams uh, looks like he's going back to the paddock area. So Vardis is uh, pretty much caught up to Finstrom, uh, probably helped by some traffic with Finstrom and it's working its way through. But they're only a couple car lengths apart from each other right now. So uh, I'd be curious if uh, uh, Nico Vardis can pull in on John Finstrom and uh, maybe uh, challenge him for the overall lead. E.B. Lunkin brings the uh, 61 S2, Porsche 2000, into the pit lane. Have a chat with the crew. So he may be uh, done for this session, so we'll keep an eye out uh, for that. And here comes our lead duo as uh, they have, uh, as we expected, sort of walked away from the field. lap times 
close, 122.9 on that last lap, and I think they have a little traffic, so uh, if they can get a couple of clear laps, we'll see what happens. Good battle coming into the carousel, side-by-side side at the entry of the carousel. So I think this was part of the group that you were talking about earlier, Rich, as they made their way onto the straight. That is that 03 car with the, uh, we'll call it the bent wing a little bit on the back. Get last lap. Uh, the 0-3 of Frank Peluso and Frank Campbell Minutes, if as they come by, but uh, if you notice that wing on the 3 car definitely uh, has a little bend to it, so not sure what that issue is, but seems to be staying in about the same place, so I don't think we need to be too concerned uh, with any issue with that. We're about... Uh, Three minutes away now from uh, the end of this one, so we'll keep an eye out at the start stand to see when we uh, get that white flag. It's not out yet, but we see Finstrom now bending it through the carousel, coming onto the straight. We may see the white flag the next time by. Finstrom uh, finally uh, gets it down there, 121.3, so 121.397 on that last lap. That would be more of a lap time I would expect uh, out of that car, and uh, they finally got it dialed up and dialed in a little bit. Yeah, that 03 machine uh, has slowed considerably coming through the S's here. Uh, you know, he must be feeling the effects of that bent wing. It's, it's really interesting uh, how the, something like that will affect the, uh, the aerodynamics and, and feel and handling of the car. So uh, he may have uh, he may have just decided, you know what, uh, you know, discretion is the better part of that. Yeah, definitely. This this again, uh, you see a lot of cars coming in early. This is uh, just a little qualifying race, so you're not uh, going to be trying to set any track records or anything else. And it uh, looks like the car is coming into the pit lane. One of the cars coming in anyway. And it is Peluso. As he brings it in, we can do see a little wobble out of that wing, so I'd say we've got a, a broken support somewhere in that. As uh, he will probably want to get that fixed. Actually, the wing looks a little straighter now than it did when he was running, but that could be because the arrow over the wing was pushing it down. I'd say there's a support on the left side that is not working right, so... That uh, is uh, definitely the issue that he's got going on. I'm talking to some of the uh, pit workers right at the moment before he continues on back into the paddock area. We did just have the 117 of Kate Wilson spin it uh, into the carousel, but he continued. No harm there, lost a little bit of ground, but uh, ended up continuing. Rex Gunning. Lola T598, number 30 car, is uh, first of the S2s. And uh, Glenn Jivinen, did you say uh, Glenn uh, retired? Uh, yeah, he, yeah, Glenn came in early and uh, E.B. Lunkin is in the pit lane as well, so the only uh, remaining S2 is the 30 of Rex Gunning. This one, the white flag is out as we expected. Finstrom down into the 120s, a 120.2. That's almost exactly what I said he would run. So I'm glad the announcer was about right on that one. As uh, yesterday he ran a 22, and I said today he should be about two seconds faster. So that ended up being true. So we'll keep an eye on Finstrom as he will get the checkered flag next time uh, by. here in a moment, he's going through Thunder Valley.
Okay, the checkered flag is out. Vinstrom's already seen that. Nico Vargas already uh, comes by as well. Probably be quite some time. Uh, almost a lap down for our third place car. We'll keep an eye on that also as uh, these cars will continue to come by to see the checker. Quick, go ahead, Rich. I was going to say the uh, third and fourth place cars of uh, JT, Elvis Lesky, and uh, Bill Niemeyer. They just came through the uh, S's here. So, uh, uh, to your point, almost a lap behind Furman uh, just came by on his uh, cool-down lap. 